intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! What can I say, everybody? I feel like a Pokemon master. I've collected all three of the starter Poke ships at level 53, and I can't be happier. This is genuine joy you see on my face because, like I said, I love this aspect of the game. Look, problems may happen, incursions may fail, alliance tournaments might disappoint, but one thing I will always enjoy is unlocking new ships, exploring the Star Trek universe, and in this case, acquiring a Romulan battle axe. That's exactly what it looks like. You can't convince me otherwise. Feel free to drop in the comment section below what you think it is, but I think it's clearly a Romulan battle axe, and Romulans are quite known for their battle axes. So, there you have it, there she is. I love her, but let's start talking about how she works, what she can be good for, where she can be good, and all the other things. Number one, on your screen, she kind of clipping off my screen here but she's a, she's a little pricey you knew that coming into this video but everything's relative you very well could be watching this you know months down the road and the economy has improved enough where you're not really worried about those you know gas and particles costing you a lot but if you look for example just getting this is going to cost me a few thousand gas that's okay it's, it's a process. And my 579 method sticks here, where you know you talk about upgrading to tier five or just general usage tier seven. If you kind of want to be good at armadas, better warp range, and then finally tier nine, if you want to have PVP. Now, there is the caveat to be added in that if you wanted to say, use this to upgrade your board cube, tier six, but I think that could just roll into the tier seven logic. And I'll be honest, I really don't feel like the board cube plays into this until later on. And with the cost of this ship, as you can see here on your screen, when it comes to maxing out, or we can split it into going through the three different levels that I just referred to, you can kind of make those decisions for yourself. I don't believe investing heavily in these, but I do believe in enjoying heavily these three uncommon ships. I loved my 50 Tribune, but I really, really am just so happy with my decision to pick these up and enjoy them and obviously y'all know that i've got all three of them now so i'll be able to compare side by side here's my north cut that y'all just saw a video on here recently and then i also have the vorchow which i've taken to tier four i will take it a little bit higher but the corvus now sits as the strongest out the dock which is to be expected with me having a ton of explorer research and explorers having a ton of research in general but this thing has more than just grid research going for it it has a great firing pattern i mean good firing pattern I guess great's relative, but I do like it slightly more than the Vorchow firing pattern for PvP because its shots are closer together. What I mean by that is round one, four, round two, you're going to knock that up to seven, then four, then seven, then four, then seven. Whereas the Vorchow's big shot, it takes a little bit longer to get going where you'll fire in the second round, but you won't fire again until round five. So there's a bigger space, meaning that in the first three to four rounds or even first 10 rounds of combat, this puppy's gonna put out more than the shot number for something like a Vorchop. Now there is a theory with some of these ships that kind of holds true. I'm gonna let my friend Retro get credit for it. He talked about this a long time ago, but you know, when it comes to the five-star ships, battleships tend to be the best when it comes to pve but it's very relative for example the sanctus an interceptor is the best pve ship at 56 whereas i would say the vorcha is the best at pve at 53 with a slight lean to the corvus in pvp but at the same time like i've said before crews matter fts matter artifacts matter etc which speaking of fts there is a very nice pvp ft you can slap on this bad mamma jamma if you want some extra power keep in mind that unless you have the ferengi whip there is no way to grind for it so you would have to purchase it directly and that of course is going to be the thaleron radiation specifically for romulan ships you could get it for your corvus then take it to your sanctus or you could have been using it back with the tribune and with the pylum etc but it's a romulan specific one prices vary based on how much you want to invest to get that but that would be the option but in terms of what the corvus does well is honestly a little bit of everything it can do your q draw hostiles i particularly like the warp range didn't mean to click on that one particularly like the warp range of all the 53s but it's nice to have for here and then you can see me doing klingon war armies appropriate me taking down q trials they're babies this isn't very effective or strong to as an opponent but I think many of you have an idea of what these ships can do. It's more important to learn the basics of warp range, 
firing pattern and then apply crew logic and research logic and FT logic to that. That doesn't mean that this thing can't be loaded out to really put some hurting on opponents. Like I said, because of its firing pattern, I do like it for PvP, which I take a Romulan inspired ship, which is the Talios here, and take a look at that PvP crew, which is, of course, the new meta, if you will, at the time of making this video with Mir Picard, Mir Data, Carol Freeman. You could also put Lorca. I'm sorry, Honor Guard Wharf over there on the opposite side, or you could honestly do Lorca if you really wanted to. If you wanted a whole breach, you felt like you'd hit criticals, but you know, your, your standard runs right here. Everything crewing wise in G5 and above kind of applies to all the ships. So, like, I would use this on any ship that I have. Doesn't matter if it's the Vorcha, Talios, Defiant, Kornar, any of these ships are kind of use the same thing. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. Think of, you know, these type of crews very much like Pike Moreau Chin of the olden days for PvE grinding. Now, if I said before, there are counteracts here, which something you have to worry about is if you're going against, say, this big, beautiful Vorcha that has, say, Battleship Strike Team, they can, in a turn, affect and maybe even flip that meta team that we just looked at. But again, that's all relative based on what's available crew-wise, which makes giving specific crews to things like the Corvus difficult. It's a beautiful ship. It's a gorgeous ship. I really do think it's a great design. But at the same time, you crewing it is based on what you have, not necessarily that there is a cookie cutter crew to make everything work. So again, positives about that, but I want to make sure that's known. I did talk about the warp range. If you look at my Vorchop, this has a pretty nice warp range, even at tier four. I haven't upgraded it to the big stuff yet, but right at 370. And again, these things level up pretty quickly. Even a tier one Corvus with my research, and everything is at warp range 298 stock is 265 so if you take away research if you take away all the different additives that get put in the game 265 is what it starts with which is going to be very good for a lot of you and yes there are other ships that have better warp range cue the conversation to bring in the nx01 for example with me currently having a warp range of over 1000 and it could be even higher and even going to ships like the italias which have a great warp range of 262 but having another ship that can go out for deep armadas and not that I'm trying to throw a slight at the NX-01 or even the Talios or even the Voyager, etc. But when it comes to Armadas, you actually prefer to have something like a Corvus so that you can have these bigger power numbers, thus bringing in more loot overall. That's the advantage of FKR ships. They're going to be better general grinders in terms of hostile loot, uh, rep loot, really. And they're going to be better performers in Armadas overall, giving you more loot, more power, more oomph. And if you do decide to follow in the path of Rev and collect all three, well, those three starter Pokemon are going to do you really well, where this is your Blastoise, yeah? This is your Venusaur, yeah? I guess you could put the green on the Corvus, but I'm sorry, this is Venusaur, kind of the, sorry, the more useless of the three. I hate to be that guy, but I'm not lying. Anybody in the comment section, feel free to back Rev up. The The weakest of the three is probably the Northcut. Now, I love the Northcut. I love all of them. But if I had to pick, hey, who are the best two? I'm picking Vorchild and the Corvus. But y'all let me know if you agree down below. And then finally, you've got the Charizard here. Why am I giving it Charizard? It's the PvP giant. Blastoise, definitely more defensive, definitely strong, greatness on right. This is the Charizard of the 53 Uncommons. Heavy Pokemon theme in today's video. But there you see with its beautiful little flamethrower right there in the front. Very good ship, very effective, can handle your PvP. Look, I've seen these things take down Sangtai. I've even seen one take down a Rotaran. All about how you can crew out. As far as PvE crewing goes, stick to your standards. This is my normal crew. I could even run something like Pipe Moreau Flox if I needed to do some silent runs. I could also run the Strange New World crew, which you remember I run a variant of that on the Monovine. I could put this on my Corvus. Last but not least, Armada crews, again, stick the same. You can even use the classics like 5-6 Con. Use the new crew that just came out with the section, kind of section 31, like weird. We'll, we'll look at them in a second and show you. Then you got this classic for solo Armadas. Really like this one. You can change this out for Changeling Kira if you want to. If you want to add in a little bit more of a neutral spice, you're not just going after solo armadas. And then the new crew that I just talked about just came out would actually pair quite nicely with something like a Vorcha, especially if the 53 Uncommon is your first 53, meaning it's probably going to be your strongest ship power ship. So if you scroll on down, you've got Dejosh and Toli, who I think, again, are very effective both against Armadas and the new Chimera Hostile. So lots of value here. Really big fan of the Corvus. Have always enjoyed it. I put it as the last 53 for me to collect simply for the reason that everybody went Corvus. There's a reason. 
that so many people went Corvus. Last but not least, I want to finish this one up with, by reminding you that you finally got an announcement for Incursions, Alliance Terminus, etc. Incursions will be running again Monday, September 30th through October 2nd. You have a day each for APEC, EU, and US. And you also are going to see the return of Alliance Tournaments very soon. Patent pending. Galaxy Invasion is next week as the time of making this video. And finally, the War Room will run alongside Incursions. Hope this gave you everything you look looking for. Work. Words are hard, and I'm not gonna worry about it. But I appreciate y'all. Live long and plunder. Stay safe with their space cowboys, deuces. That's me. Catch you in the next one. Love and appreciate all of you. An even better outro than the intro for the empire and glory to your house.